Hey, sleepyhead. It's time. With their emphasis on the explosive expression of repressed female rage, the Ginger Snaps trilogy has rewritten the rules of what the contemporary horror film can offer women. Rather than relying on standard depictions of virgins or victims, the series uses horror motifs to explore the issues that surround female sexuality. No one ever thinks chicks do shit like this. Trust me, a girl can only be a slut, bitch, tease, or the virgin next door. This has led many reviewers to argue that the Ginger Snaps films contain feminist and even lesbian subtext. While these debates have themselves generated counter-arguments and contested readings, what remains incontrovertible is the influence that the series has had over the contemporary horror landscape. So, it's time to get under the skin of this fried franchise and explore the multiple meanings behind the menstrual monsters of the Ginger Snaps trilogy. Can this happen to a normal woman? <laughs> With the original Ginger Snaps, director John Fawcett drew on the established horror film figure of the werewolf and updated this motif to fit contemporary female teen concerns. Fuck. Wrists are for girls. I'm slitting my throat. The Ginger Snaps trilogy certainly um, embodies a, a great deal of what it's like to be a woman in contemporary culture. I knew that I wanted to uh, have a pair of sort of Edward Gorey-esque sisters uh, living in the suburbs and I knew that I wanted to make a metamorphosis film. His film focuses on the close bond between two marginal and macabre heroines, Ginger and Bridget Fitzgerald, played with deadly enthusiasm by Catherine Isabel and Emily Perkins. The sisters' obsession with all things deathly not only marks them as a cause for parental concern, it also ensures their status as the untouchable geeks within the all-too-cool teen community of Bailey Downs. Go, oh, baby! You want me, baby! I hadn't really, I guess at the time, seen many werewolf films that had been made well. And I certainly hadn't seen any werewolf films that involve females as the central characters. When the pair are attacked by a wild wolf on the eve of Ginger's first menstrual cycle, <laughs> the subsequent infection provokes a terrifying transformation in the heroine's behavior. This challenges the endurance and loyalty of the two sisters. Something's wrong. Like more than you being just female. The werewolf in, in cinema draws on a lot of old myths about transformation into animal form. And a lot of those myths are about what it is to become uncivilised. By evoking the figure of the wolf as a metaphor for adolescent transformation, the Ginger Snaps films feed upon established folktale myths, linking the figure to unrestrained violence and sexual excess. Oh yeah, like I really wish I was hemorrhaging and hairy and sucking off Jason McCarthy. Well, you always wanted to be me. Well, this isn't you, so... Oh, poor bee. I'm growing up and obviously you're not, huh? The werewolf embodies somewhat of what it's like to be an adolescent. So when things start happening to your body, when you start to grow hair in places which you didn't have before. I can't have a hairy chest, be That's fucked! Suddenly, your body becomes a very strange entity. It's like you look in the mirror and you wonder who you are. However, while films like An American Werewolf in London and The Howling used extended and excessive scenes of transformation as metaphors of masculine change, the body horror of the Ginger Snaps trilogy is closely connected to menstrual cycles and uncontrollable changes in female sexuality. Say a barrel like come after a girl on the, on the rag because of the smell. As soon as we found that lunar cycles, menstrual cycles, sort of put those two together, uh, in a werewolf movie, and that was sort of when this whole thing sort of came together. Oh, it wasn't a fucking bear, it wasn't any fucking bears anywhere near here. The idea of something 
infecting you or something getting into your blood, a disease, anything, it is a very extreme uh, basic human fear. By equating menstruation with monstrosity, the Ginger Snaps films extend the impetus of previous classics such as Carrie by putting the horrific potential of female sexuality at the forefront of the genre. Oh shit. What if I'm dying or something? You know, this is usually quite a horrible experience for most girls at that age to go through that. Okay, so it's all normal. Very. Expected every 28 days, give or take, for the next 30 years. <sighs> Great. By making menstruation and female body change such a focus, the film also exposes the way in which women's bodies are linked to disgust and infection. A thick, syrupy, voluminous discharge is not uncommon. In three to five days, you'll find lighter, bright red bleeding. That may turn to a brownish or blackish sludge, which signals the end of the flow. I thought, oh man, w women are going to hate this. And in fact, it was the complete opposite. In this respect, it can be argued that Ginger's infection clearly makes her a menstrual monster, and her transformation into a terrifying teen queen provokes both desire and distress for the high school jocks she seduces. <laughs> Who's the guy? Who's the guy here? Huh? Who's the fucking guy here? <laughs> don't don't need protection here. Ah, stop it! Ah. There is a play on male fears of of female sexual dominance and in some senses that's what provides the free zone of the film is the fact that gender is in control sexually. I think it was very interesting that uh, that in fact <coughs> ginger infects Jason uh, in a, you know, from, from having sex with him. Oh McCarty what happened to you? Ginger Fitzgerald. The fact that Ginger Snaps even kills off its male romantic lead indicates that the theme of heterosexual horror may be behind the film's feminist finale. <laughs> the second entry to the series was the dark coming of age tale Ginger Snaps Unleashed. This film locates its action in a correctional facility where Bridget is mistakenly incarcerated as a drug addict. Listen, I saw a guy die. His blood was on my face. You did have blood on your face, but it was from the cuts on your arms. Here, the character has to fight off her own growing infection, as well as the abusive male staff preying on female patients. There's this vein down here that is very private. So you shave? Well, I think that's just great. As with the original, Ginger Snaps Unleashed continues the theme of lycanthropy to explore ambiguous states of female sexuality. And in the all-female setting of the Happier Times Asylum, these animalistic desires give rise to a number of startling scenes that give new meaning for the patients forced to do group. Visualize the chest of a stranger as his gaze penetrates you. Oh, interesting. Okay, there's the group masturbation scene. And, you know, I, I, we all responded to it really well, saying, well, this is a really fantastic scene, and it's unlike anything you've ever seen before, and it's a great moment in the film that just says everything, that, what she's feeling right then. It is the inclusion of such scenes which has led to disputed claims of a lesbian subtext as present in the first two Ginger Snaps films. However, the theme of lesbian lycanthropy is far from clear and is as much a point of debate for the film's creators as it is for critical reviewers. My best case scenario, Eleanor, is hair everywhere but my eyeballs. Elongation of my spine till my skin splits. Teats. And a growing tolerance, maybe even affection for it, the smell and taste of feces. The guys may disagree with me, but I find the first one really is, is the one that, that has some lesbian undertones. I think some people could definitely say there's a lesbian subtext. I don't know that I was specifically consciously trying to put that in. I think she's pretty. In the first film there is those, you know, sentences or scenes where she's saying, you know, would you be eating her and that would be like fucking her. If I wasn't here, would you eat her? I don't, I don't find that there was, um, that sentiment is shared throughout the other films at all. Maybe he's like you and it's not in his nature to kill. And he secretly Girls. wants... It wants to mate with me. Oh. Don't try too hard to visualize that.
The relationship between Bridget and Ghost in Ginger Snaps Unleashed is an interesting one in as much as it opens the way for a lesbian reading that wasn't available in, in the first Ginger Snaps film because by virtue of the fact that Bridget and Ginger were sisters.